Peter is, it's right after 1 Peter, all right? So 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 and 2 and 3 John, Jude, Revelation. So right, right there at the end of your New Testament. The, uh, the book of 2 Peter is mainly about living for God in spite of false teaching and false teachers. You know, Jesus warned and Peter and Paul both warned there would be people who would try to deceive us and uh, tell us things that they say are from God but aren't. And that shouldn't surprise us. You know, the Lord, the Lord warned us about that. In, uh, in, first Peter, I'm sorry, in 2 Peter chapter 1, he talked about the fact that we, we need to make sure we know the Lord and that we know his word. That's a real key. You know, a key to knowing the truth is not knowing what's wrong, it's knowing what's right. They say that if they are training someone to identify counterfeit money, they don't show them counterfeit money, they show them real money. They have them study real money. And then when they see the faults, they say, oh, that's not right. And that's the same with us with the Bible. We need to know what the Bible says so that when someone says or teaches something that's wrong, we say, hang on, that's not right. And we may not always know exactly what's wrong, but we, we think, oh, that, that doesn't sound right. And we go to our Bibles and we see what the truth is. Uh, in, uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, he says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. We need to know the Lord. And we also need to know his word. Uh, later on in uh, verse 16, he says, we've not followed cunningly devised fables. He said, we don't follow stories. It's not the dreaming. It's not stories that people have made up. We follow the Bible. In, uh, in verse 19, we have a more sure word of prophecy. And what he's talking about there is more sure than hearing a voice from heaven is the Bible. Wow. Wow. And he says in verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. What he's saying there is that when these people wrote the Bible, it wasn't their ideas. It wasn't their private thoughts. It was God's thoughts. You know, holy men of God, he says, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God instructed them to write. Well, he says, you need to know the Lord. You need to know the Bible because chapter 2, look at chapter 2, verse 1. But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words Make merchandise of you, whose judgments now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So he says, we need to know the truth. We need to know Jesus and the Bible, because there's going to be people who are going to lie to us. Now, what he's saying there is, um, among the people there, in the first couple lines there, false prophets among the people, he's talking about the Jews. False teaching is nothing new. It's been going on right from the beginning. Uh, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, Satan came to them and said, hath God said? <laughs> he, he tried to get them to doubt God's word. And, and right through the Old Testament, you'll hear that God, God has a complaint against the false prophets. And uh, let me just give you at least one example. I'll just read it to you. It's from Jeremiah, where he says, they have healed... Also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. They're prophesying, they're saying, oh, peace. And God's saying, no, judgment. You know, they're false prophets. They're, they're not hearing from God and saying what God has said. They're just making it up. And there's, what he's saying then is, among you, there, there sh shall be false teachers among you. That's us today, Christians. There's plenty of people who say, oh, the Bible says, and then they lie to you. Listen, that's why God gave us the Bible. I'll tell you quite often, listen, don't believe me. Go to God's word. Uh, I'm not the, the source of authority. God's word is. That's why it's so important that we, we understand and believe what God has said. 
Jesus warned about this. You know, when he, when he was preaching, one of the a difficult chapters sometimes to understand is Matthew 24, but it's not hard to understand when he says, many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. That's not hard to understand, is it? Jesus said there's going to come false teachers, false prophets, people who will tell you things, but they're not true. And they'll say, this is a message from God. By the way, that's how cults start, false religions. Someone will say, I had a message from God. It's not in the Bible. It's a secret. Listen, don't believe them. Say, if it's not in the Bible, we don't care. Uh, we want God's word. And he, he says, who is the false prophets, the false teachers? The where is among you. Now, these are not people that you see a long way off and, and you can't know them. He says, these are people that will be just like us. Uh, physically, they're, they're among us. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, he talks about our responsibility as Christians is to preach the word. Well, that's the Bible. Preach the word. In verse 3, he says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is true, the true teachings of the Bible. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Isn't that a funny picture? But he's saying they want people to preach what they want to hear. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. We don't need stories. We need the word of God. We don't need just what we want to hear. You know, sometimes the best friend you'll have is the person who'll tell you the truth. Others will, you know, they'll go around it and they'll, they'll be careful not to say the truth, you know, because they don't want to hurt your feelings. But sometimes it's the true friend who says the truth and helps you to see where you're wrong. Um, and that's God. You know, they, we don't need our ears tickled. Uh, these false teachers catch the, the flavor of the culture. Have you ever been reading history and you think, why in the world would they have done that? You know, there's things, you, you see some of the clothes people used to wear. There, there's this guy on one of the websites I go on. He was a Bible teacher many years ago. And he's got the funniest outfit on. And you think, why would somebody wear something like that? Well, maybe somebody would look at me in 100 years and say, well, why would he wear a tie? Well, you know, culture, it does funny things to us, doesn't it? What were we looking at the other day, Dorla, saying, oh, saying, oh, that, that's something in their culture. But, yeah, you know, there's things that in that culture, they think, oh, this is great. And then we look at it and we think, oh, that's, that's really weird. Well, false teachers catch the spirit of the culture. They catch what people want to do, what's attractive to them, and, and they present it as something from God. And we need to be so careful because... You know, they're not going to present things generally that are hard for us to understand or accept. It's going to fit in with the way things are going. Now, probably most of us at some time in our life have said to our parents, you know, they say, why did you do that? And we say, well, I did it because everybody else was doing it, right? And then what do the parents say? They say, well, if everybody jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? I mean, everybody's had that happen, haven't they? Uh, and that's what we're talking about here. Just because something seems like it is the way it could be doesn't mean that it comes from the Bible. And we need to be careful as Christians. Sometimes as Christians, we're going to have to be fish swimming upstream. You know, everybody's going this way, and you're going to be the only one going that way. Listen, better to go God's way and have everyone be against you than to go with the crowd and have God against you. That's what he's talking about here. Uh, these are false teachers, and they're among us. And he says there in verse 2, I'm sorry, verse 1, right in the middle, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Damnable heresies. That's what they're teaching. Now, that word damnable in the, in the original language is the same as the word at the end of the verse, destruction. Or the, the next verse, pernicious. We don't use that word pernicious much, do we? They all mean the same thing. Damnable, destruction, pernicious. What they are is talking about if you go that way, you'll go to hell. If you believe their false teaching, you'll go to hell. It's damnable. It's pernicious. It's destructive. 
it'll, it'll take you away from God and the truth. Now, I shouldn't say take you away. It, it'll cause you not to go God's way. And it, it's very, very dangerous. Um, heresies, the word heresy there in, in verse 1, damnable heresies, heresy means a choosing. Now, the importance of that is this. God says this. You look at it and you say, no, I'm going to do this. That's a choosing. And that's why it's, you know, God gave us choices. That's, that's part of being human. But when you see what God teaches and you choose something else, that's heresy. That's going against God. So a few years ago, there was a man here from America. He was the leader of the Episcopalian Church, one of the leaders. And someone asked him about a Bible doctrine, and he said, well, the Bible may say that, but the Bible's wrong. Wow, here's a lost man. Here's a false teacher. That's exactly what it is. I remember when I was door knocking one time, I was talking to a lady, and, and she said that, well, my mother said that you just have to do the best you can, and, and you know, God will, will probably think that's good enough. I said, well, are you interested to know what the Bible says and what God says? She said, well, no, not really. I'll just go with what my mother said. You know, what a heartache that is, because here's people who, in their ignorance, choose not to follow the Lord. Others, knowingly, you know, there's a lot of people who know the Bible better than we do, but they choose not to believe it. That's what heresy is. It's saying, God, I won't go your way. And there's people who teach that and who present that as what God would have us to do. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of is if you decide to believe the Bible, there's people who will call you a heretic. Uh, Paul, or, yeah, Paul was talking to Felix. He was a, a leader. And uh, he wrote this in Acts 24, verse 14. He says, this I confess unto thee, talking to this man, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. Listen how he finished that sentence. Believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. He said, I believe the Bible. And they call me a heretic. Now the reason they would call him a heretic is they had a different authority. See, we believe the Bible's the authority. And we say, well, when somebody believes the Bible, they're believing God. But there's others who say their church is the authority or whatever. I had some Mormons ask me, where do, where do you get your authority? Uh, you know, they think they get it from the Mormon church. Uh, we believe the Bible. Don't be surprised if someone calls you a heretic for believing the Bible. Uh, it's gonna, it could come to the point not too far in the future where you could go to jail for believing the Bible. There's already people who've lost their jobs by believing the Bible and publicly saying so. You see, the Bible says it's damnable heresies. See, we do choose, but we choose the Bible. We choose God's word. We believe it literally. We believe it logically. We supposedly live in a world of tolerance. Have you heard that? Boy, they promote tolerance. We want acceptance, except for these Bible believers. They're troublemakers. <laughs> wow, it's a choice. The world says we're wrong. We say the world is wrong. We have to make a choice. We can't both be right. So there's false prophets. They're among us. They're bringing in damnable heresies, people who are choosing not to go God's way. Well, how do they do it? There, there's a couple of words I want you to notice there in 2 Peter chapter 2. He uses the word privily who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Privily. Again, it's a word we don't use very often, but, but it, it means secretly or craftily. It means with deceit. In other words, they're trying to trick us. They privily, they, they, they deceitfully, trickily bring in these damnable heresies. Now, I've never seen this, but I've heard that in uh, some of the abattoirs where they're slaughtering the sheep, they have what they call a Judas sheep. It's a, it's a sheep that they've trained to lead all the other sheep in to get slaughtered. And then they take him out and you know, he lives to fight another day. But he, he brings the, those in. They follow him thinking, oh, this is the way to go. Well, listen, that's, that's trickery. 
And that's what false teachers try to do to people. They say, oh yeah, this is the, this is the way to go. Look how it's blessed me. And uh, they're clever. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, they're, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. That's where that expression comes from. Um, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. See, they're tricky. And they're like that because that's the way Satan is. Satan has people who work for him. But he doesn't send them to you saying, I work for Satan, follow me and you'll go to hell. No, he says, I work for God. You have a new way to go to heaven and you follow me. He's very tricky. No. I have to be careful what I say because someone could, could quote me, couldn't they? <laughs> I'm illustrating there. Uh, Satan is very tricky. And the Bible tells us, for instance, in 2 Corinthians 11, exactly that. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13. He says, Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. He says, these are people who, man, they're, they're preaching for the devil. But he says, they say they work for Christ. And here's his explanation. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Listen, you should be pretty suspicious if someone bases their beliefs on something they learned from an angel. Many of the false religions start with an angel giving somebody a message. Listen, be careful with that. Uh, if it disagrees with God's word... It's not from God. That might be an angel, but that's called a fallen angel. That's a demon. And uh, we need to be careful who we listen to. You see, they're, they're bringing in damnable heresies, and they're doing it. They're clever how, how they go about it. You know, many of these false teachers will help you. I've talked to people where they, you know, I'm trying to encourage them to believe the Bible, and they say, oh, well, you know, when we were in trouble, the Mormons helped us, and, oh, you know, we feel like we should be, uh, you know, loyal to them. Listen. They'll help you. Some of what they say will be true. Sometimes what they say will come from the Bible. They'll, they'll mix in truth and, and error. But you know, may, mainly it's teaching what you might call selfism. Living for yourself. Getting what you want. One man has even written a book, Live Your Best Life Now. Somebody said, if you're living your best life now, it means you're headed for hell. <laughs> if this is the best it's going to get, uh, look out. You cannot achieve a crown without a cross. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. He didn't say you'd live your best life now. He didn't say, oh, you'll have a great time and be healthy and happy and wise. And That's not what he said. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, a dangerous place, especially for a new Christian, is the Christian bookstore. <laughs> a lot of these false teachers have their books there. Joel Osteen, Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer. Man, uh, they've got some, some good things they say, but it's just worldliness with a flavor of Christianity. Uh, they're false teachers. Uh, YouTube, boy, that can be dangerous. And, and the thing is, all of these people are, they're good talkers. Uh, the Bible says many will, will follow them. Uh, what, what's the verse there? Verse, verse 2, many shall follow their pernicious ways. It's not because they're so disgusting and nobody can stand them. It's because they're attractive. It's like Satan. They're an angel of light. Um, they not only use trickery, but they, the Bible says there that they deny the Lord. You see there in verse 1, even denying the Lord that, that bought them. Um, I, I keep in the front of my Bible some notes on how to detect a false religion. I've made copies of it if you want to get it. Uh, some of this is doctrinal. Uh, do they teach any, any person other than Jesus? And many religions have somebody else. Do they teach any book other than the Bible? Listen, this is God's word. This alone is God's word. Do they teach any message other than the gospel of Christ? Do they teach any plan of salvation other than faith in Christ? Yeah, a lot of it's doctrinal, and it has to do with Jesus. Uh, two of the most important teachings that you need to understand are about Jesus and the Bible. You know, if they're off on those, they're, they're really off. That's the foundations. But you know, it's not just doctrine that exposes them. The Bible says it's morality. 
Uh, did you notice there in, uh, in verse 3 as we read, through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Oftentimes these false religions are really into the money. Uh, one of the cults mainly runs Las Vegas. You, you ever heard of Las Vegas? Most, many of those places are owned by false religions. They won't go there themselves, but they'll get the money off of it. Uh, isn't it amazing? Uh, there's religions that own wineries and uh, help the drunks to, to satisfy their, their passions. Uh, there's others that go, go even further. Uh, in verse 14 of 2 Peter 2, he says, having eyes full of adultery, oftentimes uh, there's immorality uh, involved. They say they belong to Christ, but they refuse his lordship. And the Bible says that because of that, do you see there in verse 2, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You've seen it where in the news something will happen religious. And it affects us. You know, people look at it and say, oh yeah, those Christians. They, they don't separate the cults and the false teachers from, from the Bible. And so we are tarred oftentimes with the same brush, as, as the expression goes. Uh, it, it not only has... Uh, causes difficulty, but it causes damage to the Lord and to his work. You know, as I studied this passage this week, I thought, you know, this is a real area that affects all of us as well. Um, refusing the Lordship of Christ. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is Lord. Uh, if you're a Christian, the Bible asks this question, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? Yeah, the way the Bible phrases that, it's like, don't you under, th this is so basic, don't you understand? When you got saved, you were bought with the price of the blood of Christ? The Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own, for you're bought with a price. And then he says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, they, they belong to God. You know, we look at these false teachers and we think, yeah, they're, they're wrong and they're teaching wrong things. Listen, the main one we need to be concerned about is ourselves, isn't it? We need to be concerned about the lordship of Christ. We need to submit to his word. We need to know what he says as best we can. And uh, when we don't, find out. <laughs> you know, submit to his word. We need to submit to his work. And I believe from scripture that I can say that his main work done on earth today is through local churches. And yet, you know, I meet so many people who, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I had one guy tell me, kind of proud, oh, I go to four or five different churches. I thought, well, shame on you. Listen, you need to be a part of an assembly. Can you, the Bible calls a church a body. Can you imagine if your arm was out running around all the time? Where's your arm? Oh, I don't know, it's on some other body today. <laughs> We laugh about that, but it's true, isn't it? As Christians, we need to be faithful. So faithful that if you miss and are not functioning in your church, they'll miss you. <laughs> you know? Uh, there's not many things you can cut off your body and, and not miss them. Maybe your hair. Uh, heretics often, often emphasize the extremes. You know, false teachers will say, we're the only church. Listen, we don't teach that. We're not the only church preaching the gospel in the world. Uh, just in case you didn't know that. Uh, but that's an extreme. The other extreme is, oh, it doesn't make any difference. Don't worry about church. Those are extremes. But the Bible teaches that we're to be an assembly of baptized believers, organized to carry out the Lord's work. Uh, we, we need to be a, a body for Christ. Uh, these heretics, they work, they're crafty. They deny the Lord. And he, he uses the expression there in verse uh, 3, they use feigned words. That word feigned means plastic. Have you ever seen something that looks like leather? You ask them about it, they say, oh, it's plastic. <laughs> it's a fake, you know? And they use words that are plastic. And oftentimes when you're talking to false teachers, they might use the same words we do, but they mean something different. I read a, a man talking about this. He said he had a lady who attended their Bible study who actually was a member of another church. And he knew that the pastor of that other church was a heretic. <laughs> and he asked her about it. You know, oh, she said, oh, no, he preaches the same thing you do. 
A- after Easter, yeah, you know, she said, oh, he preached the resurrection. He said, well, you ask him if he believes in the bodily resurrection. And he said, she called her the next day weeping. He said, he laughed when I asked about the bodily resurrection. See, he used the word resurrection, but he didn't believe it. And that's the, that's the way people will do. Uh, Satan will use the same word. He'll use God's words. When Jesus was tempted, what did Satan do? He quoted scripture at Jesus. You know? Uh, we need to be careful. We need to be submitted to the lordship of Christ. Because if we're not, he says it will bring us to destruction. It will bring us to disgrace. And, and I think that the main reason comes up there in verse 3, through covetousness. Now, the false teachers do it for money. Now, these false religions, they're around for money. Don't Make no mistake. Uh, one man just, just decided, to, uh, Scientology, he just decided, there's money in religion. I'm going to start a religion. <laughs> and boy, he's, he's caused a lot of, wreaked a lot of havoc through it. A very strange religion, doesn't believe in God. Uh, but anyway, um, covetousness. And you know, that filters down to all of us, doesn't it? If we're not careful, we'll be living our lives selfishly. Just what, what we want. You know, there's songs about it. I did it my way. And like, that's a good thing. Man, uh, we need to be followers of the Lord. Uh, what about you this morning? Are you going your own way or are you going God's way? The, the Bible says in, in Isaiah that that's the main thing Jesus saves us from is our own way. Let, let me read it to you. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And listen to what God says about that. And the Lord hath laid upon him, that's Jesus, the iniquity, that means sin, of us all. See, the sin we're saved from is going our own way. He says in Acts 3.19, repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent means turn around. Quit going your way, go God's way. Repent ye therefore, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And he says you'll receive blessings from the Lord because of it. We need to be careful that we're not following heresy, that we're not following just what tickles our ears. Uh, There was a group some years ago that when they wanted to start a church, they did a survey. They asked people, if you went to church, what kind of church would you like to go to? Well, what do you think they should teach and, and do? So they wrote it all down, and they started a church like that. And boy, they had lots of people come. Listen, that's just heresy, isn't it? It's not coming to people and saying, listen, here's a message from God that you need to follow. It's saying, what's your message to God? Listen, God doesn't need our messages other than, than prayer of God, save me. Uh, we need to be careful that we are not involved in covetousness and selfishness. The Bible tells us, Selfishness will not bring happiness. He says, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I heard in the news this week, I don't remember what company there he was the head of, but billions of dollars, and he and his wife are getting a divorce. So she's going to get billions of dollars, and she's going to give half of it to charity. A big deal. Listen, money will not bring you happiness. You could be the world's richest person and still end up divorced and unhappy and miserable. What shall it profit to gain the whole world? Jesus said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And that's what I want. I want the refreshing from God. And that comes through his word and through his son. Now, are you saved? Are you saved? Now, have you... Quit going your own way and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please save me. Give me, I believe that you died and rose again for me. Make me your child. What a blessing that is to know the Lord, to know that our eternity is in his hands. If you are saved, live for Jesus. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's why we're here. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In Philippians, he says, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I've not run in vain. What a shame it would be to live your whole life and have it be in vain. That means useless, empty. You might live to be 99, and you get to the end of your life, and you th- without Jesus, you're going to say, that was a waste of time. 
with Christ, every minute counts. And his glory is, is the key. Uh, this morning, I, I hope you'll think about this. God warns us very carefully. Listen, we have the truth of God's word. Prophecy came. Uh, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But false prophets are there too. False teachers are there too. We don't want to go their way. We don't even want to go our own way. We want to go God's way. I hope you do. Now, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. With our heads bowed in, in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Uh, maybe the Lord has brought to mind some of your own selfishness, or your own wickedness. Maybe you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. The Bible says today, now is the time to be saved. Uh, let's go to him in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your, your word. Lord, thank you that you've given us the Bible, that you sent Jesus, the living word. Lord, that we can know the truth, and the truth can make us free. The truth will make us free, Lord. We're thankful for that. Father, I pray if there are those here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would be speaking to their heart and drawing them to you. Lord, help us not to be selfish. Help us not to live for covetousness, for what we can get out of life, but Lord, help us to live for you. I pray for Christians. Help us to honor you as Lord, recognize the price that you paid for us. And Father, if there are those this morning that are not saved, that they trust you today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.